dear students today we shall be talking about various environmental factors which affect spawning in fish we shall be talking about various abiotic factors or environmental factors which are responsible for the successful spawning of fish in nature as well as there are certain factors which we should keep in mind for successful breeding of fish before proceeding it is my request to you all to like and subscribe my channel bio learnia so there are certain factors which play an important role in spawning of the fish so there are certain factors which we call them as the favorable environmental factors and there are certain factors which we call them as the repressible environmental factors the favorable environmental factors they play a positive role in breeding of the fish whereas there are certain factors which play a negative role that is those very environmental factors which have ne negative effect on the breeding of the fish that is by the presence of those very factors the fish is unable to breed so firstly we shall be talking about the favorable climatic and other conditions they increase the chance chances of successful breeding the failures are mostly due to incorrect choice of breeders wrong doses of fishery extracts and unfavorable climatic conditions so besides favorable climatic con conditions we should keep in mind that the first and the foremost thing that we have to keep in mind is the correct choice of breeders if we are going for the breeding of the in case of aquaculture we should have a clear cut we should be having a clear idea about the choice of the breeders and secondly the dosage of the fishery extract that plays an important role the dosage of the fishery extract should be exact that should be standardized and according to the um, the exact quantity and we should also keep in mind about the unfavorable climatic conditions now generally when we talk about the unfavorable climatic conditions we talk about the hot sultry and sunny days they are not suitable for the undertaking of the induced breeding so we should we should avoid the um, injecting or artificially um, artificial breeding or inducing the fish to breed on the hot sultry or sunny days and environmental factors such as light temperature water condition they are known to play an important role in case of the breeding of the fish then these are these are also responsible for the release of the fishery um, these very fishery hormones in the form of the uh, gonadotrophins and mostly we all know that the follicle stimulating hormone and the um, luteinizing hormone they are actually uh, responsible for the fishes to breed now we shall be talking one by one the environmental factors that are concerned with the fish breeding they are the, they are light they are temperature they are certain ecological factors they are certain meteorological factors and these factors they play an important role in stimulating the release of fishery gonadotrophins and thereby controlling the reproduction in fish then firstly we shall be talking about the light that how light plays an important role in spawning of the fish it is an important factor that controls reproduction in case of fish when we talk about the light early maturation and spawning of fish as a result of enhanced photo photoperiodic regimes so when the when the days are long and the nights are shorter so many times this helps the fish to breed that is an that is a cue for the maturation and spawning of the fish when the photoperiodic re regimes they are enhanced so when we talk about in india sirhanus reba that was found to attain early maturity when subjected to artificial day lengths longer than natural day so when the day lengths were increased with by the help of the artificial light it was found that sirhanus reba was found to attain early maturity and it was also found that even at low temperatures of the winter months um, even at 19 to 20 degree centigrade so light plays an important role so even though the temperature was low but the length of the day was long uh, or we can say that the length of the day was artificially lengthened and even then the sirhanus reba that bred in 19 to 20 degree centigrade 
Then if we talk about the resorption of the gonads in Serhanus reba, it was delayed in spanning conditions and could be maintained up to November. So um, in, in response to the light or the photo period, the resorption of the gonads in the case of Serhanus reba that was also delayed and the spanning conditions that can be maintained up to November. That is, they may be they may be extended up to the November if the light that is the photo period that is enhanced. So the second important uh, uh, environmental factor that plays an important role is uh, temperature so the role of environmental temperature on sexual maturation and spawning of the fish in india has been studied and it was found that in case of imcs that is indian major carps it was found to range uh, found uh, within a range of 24 to 31 degrees centigrade so it it is uh, it is uh, um, it is uh, found that the indian major calves they breed in a particular range of temperature that is 24 to 31 degree centigrade and when we talk about the chinese silver and the grass calf they have been successfully induced bred at temperatures 28 to 34 degree centigrade so mostly the indian major calves they breed um, when the temperature is 24 to 31 degree centigrade and when we talk about the Chinese calves, they were successfully induced bed at temperature 28.2 degree centigrade to 24 degree centigrade. And it was also observed that the natural spanning of the fishery injected grass carp at a water temperature varying between 28.9 to 31.1 degree centigrade. So, talking about the grass carp, when uh, um, natural spanning of the fishery injected, uh, grass carp, it was found that the water temperature which varies between 28.9 to 31 degree centigrade, uh, so natural spanning was shown in the case of the fishery injected grass carp. The optimum, whereas the optimum temperature is 27 degree centigrade as in case of Indian major carps. So when we talk about the Indian major carps, it is almost 27 degree centigrade, but it was observed that the natural spanning of the fishery injected grass carp at a water temperature which varies between 28.9 to 31 degree centigrade. The third important environmental factor which plays an important role or which is responsible for the breeding of the fish is dissolved oxygen. So high dissolved oxygen is most important for hatching as well um, and they require as these very hatchlings they require more oxygen. So many fishes they do not breed in water which is poor in oxygen content and renewal of the water induces them to breed. So on one hand when we, these all environmental factors they are interconnected. When we see that the dissolved oxygen is um, renewed, dissolved oxygen is increased, that stimulates the fish to breed. And mostly what we see in the case of the carps, that the monsoon season is the, um, is the best breeding season for the carps. So what we see in that very phase, we see the rainfall, we see the uh, thundering, we see the mm, flow of the water increases and that helps in the excessive, you can say, um, dissolution uh, of the oxygen in water and hence dissolved oxygen content in water increases and that stimulates the fishes to breed as the fishes require higher temperature um, as a stimulating factor for breeding and we all know that why this is important this is important because the hatchlings uh, require more oxygen uh, for the development now when we talk about the another aspect that is water current and rain so these are uh, and these are also important and are interdependent so when we talk about the water current and rain rheotactic response to water current is well established for fishes so there are certain fishes which move against the water current or which move towards the water current that is um, against the water current and with the water current so both things they they stimulate the fish to breed and mostly when when it rains the water current increases there is a, there are a stronger water currents which stimulate the fishes to breed so rain becomes a prerequisite to spawning of the major carps even when they are injected with fishery extract so 
main uh, by injecting the pituitary hormone alone does not stimulate the fish to breed in certain fishes in case of certain fishes so fishes do require uh, these very um, rain or it's pre prerequisite that is the rain like conditions for the fishes to in order to stimulate uh, for uh, stimulate and breed so rainy season it is the it is seen that more the monsoon more the rain so more the water current and more the stimulation and more the maturation and more the gonadal activity so all these very things they are interconnected when we see that the rainy season uh, when it is the the monsoons are more it means there is more rain there is more water current there is more stimulation and therefore this very stimulation helps the fishes in terms of the maturation of the gonads with the help of the follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone and there is more gonadal activity and thus the fishes are stimulated in such a way that they are able to they get mature and they are able to release the egg then another environmental factor which plays an important role is cloudy weather so successful spawning in majority of the fishes that has been induced on cloudy or rainy days especially after the shout so we see many a times what we see that the uh, there is a successful spawning in majority of the fishes when they are induced bred or they are artificially tried to we try to artificially breed them on a cloudy or rainy day so the these uh, this we can say that there is successful chances of the spawning in the case of the majority of the fishes and the factor is highly essential because the weather remains cool and the cloudy weather attracts the fishes so on one hand there is a dip in temperature and on the other hand this very cloudy weather it attracts the fishes and many times what we see that the thundering during the rainy season and the uh, this very clouds uh, cloudy day it also stimulate the fishes to breed there are certain other parameters as well which are responsible for the fishes or which are uh, responsible for the fishes to breed so the carps they are found to breed at a fairly wide range of ph and for successful breeding alkaline ph is necessary so now the fishes do breed in a wide range of ph but may, mostly it is seen that the water should be slightly alkaline the hormonal influence what is hormonal influence that is also an important parameter which uh, which is helps the fishes to breed the gonadotrophins have been found to increase during the spawning and decrease afterwards and due to presence of the females there is an increase in gonadotrophin level in males so the presence of the females in a particular breeding pond or a particular area it helps the fishes uh, the male fishes to increase it helps to increase the gonadotrophin level in the case of males whereas the follicle stimulating hormones and the luteinizing hormones they have been reported to influence the gonadal maturity of the fishes so on one hand we can say ph is also important hormonal influence is important follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone which are mostly because of the um, activation of the pituitary gland or because of the pituitary gland so the there are other factors that influence the spawning in fishes as i was talking about that there are many factors the availability of the nest building site so one hand we can see there are certain environmental factors but on the other hand if a fish finds a particular nest building site it also stimulate the fish to spawn easily and then what are the other factors we shall be talking uh, now we have talked about some in detail but we shall be going through that what are the other factors which are responsible for the breeding of the fish so um, earlier it was opined that the fresh rain water and the flooded condition in tank they are the primary factors in triggering the spawning of the fish then presence of the repressive i was talking also about the repressive factors that there are certain stimulatory factors there are certain repressive factors stimulatory factors such as increase in d in dissolved oxygen such as we can say that um, increase in ph the thundering the rain uh, the uh, fast currents then um, little bit optimum temperature 
then we can say photo period they are all the conditions which enhance the fish to breed so we call them as a stimulatory factors but there are certain repressive factors such as such as polluting agents such as pesticides such as we can say a certain uh, you can say electrolytes many a times certain electrolytes um, they can be they can be repressive factors so the presence of the repressive factors may be responsible for inhibiting the spawning of the calves in confined waters but when these repressive factors they are sufficiently diluted so um, when the water is less these repressive factors they are in concentration but when we dilute the water because of the excess water because of the rains because of uh, the artificial putting in water so or because of the floods these uh, repressive factors they get diluted and thus the spawning occurs so then the then some workers suggested that it is sudden drop in electrolyte levels so i was talking about with with the increase in the water levels the electrolyte level they drop so in the environment uh, and which is caused by the heavy monsoon or the rain or water current it also induces the gonadal hydration resulting in the norm natural spawning of the calves so drop in the electrolyte level it also results in the spawning of the calves then i was also talking about the rain water and the weather condition they are also important factors for the induced breeding of the fish then successful spawning in majority of the fishes that has been induced on cloudy and rainy days especially after heavy showers that is successful um so i was talking about the um, that the rainy days and the cloudy and uh, during the heavy showers successful breeding ta um, takes place the calves are known to breed at fairly wide range of ph and dissolved oxygen content now i was talking about the little bit alkaline ph and the more uh, dissolved oxygen it stimulate the fishes to breed then <coughs> i shall be fastly talking about the factors which are conducive for the successful breeding of the fish so many a times what we see that availability of the mature and the uh, right male and female breeders that is a conducive factor that is um, very much important for the successful breeding of the fish collection of the pituitary glands from the fully gravid fishes we have talked about the um, induced breeding and we have also talked about that the uh, when the pituitary is taken from the mature male and the female that gives us good results so uh, here in we can we can uh, note this very point that the collection of the pituitary glands from the fully gravid fishes that is a factor which is conducive for successful spawning proper assessment of the dosage of pituitary uh, gland uh, or pituitary hormone that is also an important that is the dosage should be um, optimum that is for example in the case of calves what we have uh, read that 2 to 3 mg per kg body weight in the case of the females is first dose whereas 5 to 8 mg per kg body weight in the case of females is the second dose that is the first is primary dose second is resolving dose and in the case of males the, the only one dose is given that is 2 to 3 mg per kg body weight in the case of calves so proper assessment of the dosage is important that that is a factor which is conducive for the successful uh, spawning of the fish then the, the conducive physiochemical parameters of the um, spawning that is i we talked about the optimum dissolution generally it should be generally between 6 to 7 ppm optimum ph range should be from 6 to 8 but alkaline is preferred then lunar periodicity is also an important factor which is con conducive for successful spawning optimum temperature that is 28 to 30 degree centigrade mostly in the case of calves that is an important uh, temperature range then lighting and the thunder shower they are also important factors which stimulate the fish to breed then stimulation effect of the silt particle pressure on the body of the spawners and the pressure can be measured by conductivity meter many mainly when we when we see the total dissolved uh, 
substances and the conductivity of the water that is because uh, of the silt particles that is uh, are uh, when we say that it is because of the rains the silt particles um, they increase and they put a pressure on the body of the spanners and they also help to stimulate the fishes to breed electromagnetic properties the water within the limited range is also helpful in in breeding of the fish then high turbidity of about 2000 to 2500 parts per million that is also a factor which is conducive for the spawning of the fish <clears throat> the stimulation on the mature fish by minerals in solution or suspension in water is also an important factor which is responsible for the successful spawning and the, i was talking about the current of the water that is an important factor for the spawning of the fish <clears throat> when we when we talk about the resultant effect of the uh, all these very above stated that is uh, the factors which we discussed that is the dissolved oxygen ph uh, photoperiodicity then we talked uh, about um, about the silt particles we talked about electromagnetic properties of the water high turbidity then presence of the uh, minerals and then current of the water then lesser the repressive factors factors they are all important but the resultant effect of the all these very above stated physiochemical factors they provide stimulation for the sex play and spawning so all these very factors which are conducive for the successful spawning they they actually stimulate um, the fishes for the sex play and spawning and these um, when we view these very uh, from the uh, point of we'll view these very factors from the point of physiology of the spawners these external stimuli help in releasing necessary hormones um, first so these very factors they help the fishes to release the necessary hormones first from the pituitary gland uh, for the stimulation um, for stimulating gonads as well as for the final release of the ova and sperm for fertilization so all these very factors we have we have talked about in the induced breeding as well that there are certain environmental factors there are certain physiological factors which play an important role and they activate the fish tree to um, to stimulate the gonads as well as the final release of the ova and the sperm for the fertilization <clears throat> now many times what we see that uh, we try to breed the fishes in buns as well so we should keep certain factors in mind for the breeding of the fishes in buns that the spawning may um, as mostly the spawning occurs at night um, during the bright sun so uh, spawning may occur at night um, and many times it also um, happens um, in certain species uh, during the bright sun in the forenoon so we should be uh, we should be well aware about the fishes which we are culturing that whether they are going to spawn at night or during the bright uh, sun so after a period of the breeding behavior mating occurs so when we see that the, the their breeding behavior is approaching and the mating occurs with vigorous splashing of the water and the number of the scales um, of the fishes may get dislodged uh, even because many times the the males chase the female and uh, the they the indulge in sex play and many times they they chase in such a way that the, even the scales of the fishes they get dislodged while some fishes even sustain minor injuries so we have to we have to look them carefully and after spawning is our thick blanket of the eggs is left behind so when the spawning um, occurs we have to note about the thick blanket of the eggs which is left behind at the spawning site and when we talk about in the case of buns the spent fish in the buns it moves to the deeper areas after um, after release of the eggs so the fishes which release the eggs uh, we call them as a spent fishes so the fishes which release all the eggs are the which has spawned we call them as the spent fish so these very spent fish after laying the eggs or after releasing the eggs they move to the deeper areas no single factors can probably be attributed to spawning of the major calves in bund and rivers no single factor but they are the combination of the factors many factors are responsible for the breeding of the fish in bunds then the act of spawning that involves the completion of a chain of interrelated preconditions 
so when we talk about the spanning there is a chain of interrelated preconditions now what are those heavy monsoon flood heavy monsoon flood which is capable of inundating vast shallow areas is believed to be primarily factor responsible for spawning so the monsoon floods they are also stimulate stimulatory factor which uh, when they cover the shallow areas even they become even they become the uh, primary factor which are responsible for the spawning and some workers believe the availability of the shallow spawning ground to be deciding factor for spawning and the rise in the level of the water so the level rise when the um, uh, level of the water rises naturally or artificially we can increase the level of the uh, water in the case of the tanks uh, whereas in the case of the natural uh, the level of the water uh, increases by the rain and the floods it it stimulate the fishes to breed and the temperature of water for spawning is about 22 to 33 degree centigrade and other factors such as ph high dissolved oxygen alkalinity chloride minerals they do not seem to play any significant role in spawning but though it has been found that the ph should be little bit uh, alkaline and dissolved oxygen should be a little bit on the higher side they play an important role so spawning is inhibited due to presence of the hormone like scretin in captive waters so many a times what we see if we if we try to breed the fishes in the in um, the stagnant water which uh, which has the hormone scretin um, the fishes uh, they um, it acts as an inhibitory factor so we should always replenish the water with the newer one when we when we have to breed the fishes in the uh, in the in captivity so the water that has flown through a dry bed of the land which is rich in humus has stimulatory effect on spawning so many a times what we see that the water which is uh, flowing from the watershed or a dry bed of the rich humus uh, toward the toward the band or toward the pond we see that very water uh, that uh, has a stimulatory effect on spawning this was all about the um, factors environmental factors which are responsible for the spawning in the case of fishes we have talked about the spawning in the case of uh, natural water we have talked about spawning in the case of buns or artificial conditions so this was all for today next time we shall be dealing with the trout culture thank you thank you very much and i request you all to like and subscribe my channel by learnia